Hi students, myself Dipankar Majumdar. I am assistant professor of Department of Microbiology of this college. Today, I will discuss about the status of microorganisms in the living world. And it is included in the first paper of the first semester of your curriculum. Okay. In this chapter or in this topic, we will learn what is microorganism, what is the main types of microorganisms, what are their sizes, what are the basic instruments to study microorganisms and how to classify microorganisms and what are the status of microorganisms in the living world. Okay. The origin and dominance of microorganisms for billions of years, microbes have extensively shaped the development of the Earth's habitats and influenced the evolution of other life forms. It is understandable that scientists searching for life on other planets first look for the signs of microorganisms. The fossil record uncovered in ancient rocks and sediments points to bacteria-like cells having existed on Earth for at least 3.5 billion years. Early microorganisms of this type dominated the Earth's life forms for the first 2 billion years. Okay, and this is the diagram that is how the probable origin of universe, then origin of Earth and the earliest prokaryotic cells appeared and earliest eukaryotic cells appeared, reptiles, cockroaches, termites, mammals and human beings. You can see that in the beginning of life forms, the earliest prokaryotic cells was originated near about 3.5 billion years ago. And due to course of evolution, the complex life forms, including prokaryotes and then primitive eukaryotes, then advanced eukaryotes, and then other human, other organisms, and in the last stage, the human beings have appeared. This is the life history of the living organisms from the primitive world to the present world. The, these ancient cells were small, simple and lacked specialized internal structures to carry out their functions. It is apparent that genetic materials of these cells was not bound into separate component called nucleus or carrion. Carrion, the word is in Greek. That means the nucleus and the term assigned to the cells and microbes of this type is prokaryotic. Pro means primitive and carrion means nucleus, meaning it is containing the primitive type of nucleus or it is the cell the before the origin of nucleus. About 1. billion years ago, there appeared in the fossil record a more complex cell which had developed a nucleus and various specialized internal structures called organelles. And these organelles include mitochondria, chloroplast, ribosomes, peroxisomes, Golgi bodies, etc. And these types of cells and organisms are defined as eukaryotic. Eu means ideal or well developed, that is in Greek, and carrion. Carrion means nucleus. And in reference, it is having the true nucleus. Uh, these are the basic cell types, prokaryotic cell, eukaryotic cells, and examples of viruses. In case of prokaryotic cells, the chromosome or the DNA, it is in circular form and it is not packed with the histone proteins and it is not forming the chromosomes. And ribosomes in case of prokaryotic cells are 70S type. And the prokaryotic cells is not having the well developed nucleus or the genetic material that is present inside the cell is not confined in a membrane. And no membrane bound organelles like mitochondria, chloroplasts, etc. 
are not found in case of prokaryotic cells and the ribosome it is 70s type that is 50s plus 30s and the other characteristic features present in the prokaryotic cell are in case of mainly the bacterium the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan and it is not found in case of eukaryotic cells okay and in case of eukaryotic cells the nucleus is well developed that means its genetic material that is dna is packed with the histone proteins to form nucleosomes and that is condensed into the formation of chromosomes and it is confined in the membrane and the nucleus is well developed other cell organelles like mitochondria ribosomes plastids etc sorry chloroplasts etc are present and cell membrane is present in both the prokaryotic cells as well as in eukaryotic cells but in case of cell wall the cell wall is present in case of fungal cells in case of algal cells in case of plant cells and they are different in compositions but in case of animal cells the cells are without cell membranes and in case of viruses viruses are present in between the living and non living because without the host proper host or inside the presence of a proper host virus is acting as non living and virus can be crystallized it is the property of inert material but inside the host virus is acting as a living organism it is having one type of nucleic acid either dna or rna and it is enveloped or in case of complex virus that is bacteriophage it is icosahedron head and having the capsid nucleic acids tails etc are present okay people observe the natural world term teeming with life cannot help but be struck by its beauty and complexity but for every feature that is visible to the naked eye there are millions of other features that are concealed beyond our sight because of their small size and this alternate microscopic world is populated by a vast microbial organisms or microbial communities that is equally beautiful and complex to sum up the presence of microbes in one word that is they are ubiquitous they are found everywhere microbes are found in us on us and everywhere around us they are found in all natural habitats like soil water etc and most of that have been created by humans as scientists continue to explore remote and unusual environments the one one entity that always find is microbes they exist deep beneath the polar ice caps in the ocean to the depth of 7 miles in hot springs and thermal vents in toxic waste dumps and other habitats microbiology is a specialized area of biology that deals with tiny life forms that are not ideally observed without magnification which is said to said that they are microscopic these microscopic organisms are collectively referred to as microorganisms or microbe or several other terms depending upon the purpose so in general term microorganisms are studied with the help of microscopes the word microorganism is derived from a greek word micro that is m i k r o that means small and organism it is an english word so microorganisms means they are small organisms 
but what is their size? And the microorganisms are studied with the help of the instrument microscope. And the microscope word is also derived from two Greek words, micro means a small plus scopia. That means these are the small creatures or small organisms that is seen with the instruments. This is known as microscope. And you will ask another question, what will be the size that we have to use microscope to see the creatures? We will come to that point later. Okay. Some people call them germs or bugs in reference to their role in infection and disease. But those terms have other biological meanings and perhaps place undue emphasis to the, on the disagreeable reputation of microorganisms. The major groups of microorganisms included in this study are bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa, algae and helminths. And helminths means these are parasitic worms. Now, these are the branches of microbiology and bacteriology. This is the study of bacteria. Bacteria is the small single celled prokaryotic organisms. Mycology. Mycology is the study of fungi. And fungi are the group of eukaryotes that are basically microscopic. Protozoology. And protozoology deals with the protozoa and these are eukaryotic and mostly single-celled. Virology and this branch of science deals with the viruses. And viruses are minute and non-cellular particles that parasitize the cells. Why it is non-cellular? Because viruses don't have cytoplasm and they are devoid of any types of cell organelles. So they are simply known as acellular. Next term is parasitology. Parasitology is the general term that is dealing with the parasitism and parasitic organisms. It may include bacteria, may include virus, may include protozoa, may include fungi and other forms of microorganisms. Phycology or algology and these are basically the study of algae and algae are simple photosynthetic eukaryotes okay and they are basically single celled and morphology morphology is the detailed structure study of microorganisms physiology that is mainly the microbial physiology how the microorganisms do their biochemical activities that is metabolism or cellular in cellular and molecular level taxonomy Taxonomy is the science that deals with the classification, naming and identification of microorganisms. Microbial genetics, molecular biology, this is the function of genetic materials and the biochemical reactions that make up a cell's metabolism and microbial ecology, that is the interrelationship between microbes and the environment. The role of microorganisms in nutrient cycle is too much important and should be studied in great detail. Now, these are the types of microorganisms. Microorganisms can be classified into three types, eukaryotic, prokaryotic, and acellular. In case of eukaryotic cells or eukaryotic microorganisms, they are mainly algae, fungi, protozoa, and microhelminthes. And these are having some common properties. And these are basically, they are having well-developed nucleus. And nucleus, well-developed nucleus means the genetic material or DNA is confined in a nuclear membrane. And it is packed with the histone proteins and forming the nucleosome. And after that, in higher order of condensation, they will form the chromosomes. 
but in case of prokaryotic that means they are having the primitive type of nucleus or it is before the nucleus that means the genetic material that is dna is not confined in a membrane and its genetic material is not packed with histone proteins and it is not forming the nucleosomes these are the basic criteria other criteria are also present they are having 70s ribosomes they are devoid of various types of cell wall in case of mycoplasma they are wallless and they can pass through the bacteriological filter paper chlamydia rickettsia archibacteria cyanobacteria eubacteria we will come in later part of this lecture and another type of microorganism is acellular these are including viruses viroids virusoids and prions why they are acellular because the viruses specifically viruses are not having with cytoplasm they are not having any cell organelles okay and they are mainly made up of Gen the either DNA or RNA as genetic material and a protein coat. Viruses are absolute or obligate parasite without the host or outside the host cell, they are behaving like an inert material and inside the host, they are replicating and they are functioning like a living organism by using the machinery of the host. Ah, these are the diagrams of basic types of microorganisms, six basic types of microorganisms. The first one is the bacteria, that is mycobacterium tuberculosis, that is responsible for the causing of disease TB, rod shaped cells. Next one is the fungi histoplasma capsulatum, it is also a pathogenic fungi and it is responsible for the disease histoplasmosis. Third one is the algae that is spirogyra, very common and you have studied in the 11, 12 level biology books about the spirogyra and diatoms. Okay. And the fourth one is the viruses, herpes simplex. Okay. The cause of cold source. This is a virus. Fifth one is the protozoa and this is Oxytrica triflex bearing the taps of cilia that is functioning like a tiny legs. And the sixth one is the helminth that is a round ones of trichinella spiralis. These are the basic six, six basic types of microorganisms. Uh, dimensions of microorganisms. Now, I have already told that microorganisms are the tiny organisms that can be studied with the help of microscopes. But you should remember that when we should use microscope for the study of a mango tree or for studying a dog or cow, we don't need a microscope. But to study a bacterium like Escherichia coli or Vibrio cholerae or a fungus like Penicillium, we should use microscope because they are small. That means our naked eye is having a limitation that can see a comparatively bigger object without any aid. Or in case of microorganisms, our naked eye can't see because our naked eye is having a limitation. What is the limitation? In general, our naked eye can resolve two points P1 and P2 as two separate points if they are apart from each other at least 0.1 millimeter. That means the object 
which is having the dimension lesser than 0.1 millimeter can't be resolved by a naked eye. So, the size of microorganism is generally lesser than 0.1 millimeter. Okay. The concept is best visualized by comparing microbial group with some organisms of the macroscopic world and also with the molecules and atoms of the molecular world. The dimensions of microscopic organisms are usually given in centimeters, meters, whereas those most of the microorganisms fall within the range of micrometers and sometimes nanometers and millimeters. Now, millimeter, mm, one millimeter. We are capable to see the object that is having the dimension of or a diameter, suppose it is a diameter, if it is 0.1, then our naked eye can see. If it is smaller than 0.1 millimeter, our naked eye can't see. Okay. So, if we are considering millimeter as a standard measurement, because in the scale which we are using for measurement, millimeter is the smallest unit. But for the studying of micro, microorganisms, much more smaller units are also used. One millimeter is equal to, or you can write, one millimeter is equal to thousand micron mu micron. Okay. Or one micron is equal to one by thousand millimeter. So most of the bacteria are in the range of micron. Okay. And another small unit that is millimicron. Or you can write micron or micrometer, mu m, micrometer. Mu or mu m is same. Mu is micron and mu m is micrometer. Okay. And another unit that is millimicron. And in abbreviation, it is M mu. Millimicron is the thousand one thousand part of a micron. Okay, it is much more smaller than the micron. And in your examination, a common question may come. What is the difference between mu m and m mu? This is like khabar jol and jol khabar. Mu m and m mu. Mu m means micrometer, m mu is millimicron. Millimicron is thousand times smaller than micrometer. Okay. Another unit is also present that is nanometer. Nano meter that is nanometer is the one lakh part of a millimeter that is nanometer and nanotechnology or nanomaterial is coming in that range it is in nanometer level okay nanometer is simply written as nm and another unit is also used for the study of viruses or for the study of biomolecules like dna rna proteins etc is angstrom 
and it is written as a and a sign of degree in the top of the a it is not like degree celsius okay angstrom angstrom is one millionth of millimeter it is angstrom one angstrom is equal to one millionth of a millimeter and you have to be familiar with these measurements okay okay size range of most microbes extends from the smallest viruses measuring around 10 nanometer and actually not much bigger than a large molecule to protozoans measuring 3 to 4 millimeter and visible with naked eye okay and this there is a diagram that is showing the metric chart that is symbol log number multiplier etc are given and in the top of the diagram that is macroscopic for the study of flies or for the study of round one you can be studied these uh, fungus sporangium all these can be studied with the naked eye and this is macroscopic and for the study of some smaller organisms rickettsia cocci rods spiropeds mold spores algae protozoans they are ranging from 1 micrometer to 50 micrometer or slightly larger these are microscopic and beyond that limit that is 0.1 nanometer or much more shorter units can be used for atoms hydrogen atom glucose molecule protein molecule dna molecule polioviruses herpes viruses pox viruses that is ranging about 200 nanometer they can be studied with the help of electron microscopes and so they are simply basically known as ultra microscopic organisms or objects now coming to the types of microscopes and microscope is the basic instrument that is used to study microorganisms and they are basically of three types in your curriculum two types of microscopic microscopes you will study and these are the light microscopes and electron microscope and third category which i have included here it is not included in your curriculum but for knowledge i have included that is scanning probe microscopes okay in case of light microscopes uh, various types of light microscopes bright field dark field fluorescent phase contrast confocal stereo microscopes video microscopes polarizing microscope uv and interference microscopes in that case the visible light that may be sunlight or artificial light or uv light okay can be used as the source of illumination and the range of the uv light is 200 to 400 nanometer wavelength of uv light and wavelength of visible light is ranges from that is vibgeo that is ranging from 400 to 780 nanometer and the light which is used in the light microscope are electromagnetic in nature that means it is having both electric as well as magnetic components okay and in case of electron microscope electrons the, these are mainly transmission electron microscope or tem scanning electron microscope or same scanning transmission electron microscope or stem in that cases electrons are used as the source of illumination and the power of resolution that means the smaller objects which can be magnified by the electron microscope is much more higher because the wavelength of 
electron is much more smaller. And the light microscope, the wavelength of visible light is much more higher. In the microscopy part, we will discuss. Okay, and another thing is the lesser the wavelength of the illuminating particle, that is electron is the mag power of magnification is much more higher, the lesser the wavelength of illuminating particle, the cell ionization power is much more higher. So the electron microscope can magnify much more higher range, higher range in comparison to light microscope. Okay. And in case of scanning probe microscope, it is a special type of microscope where a physical probe is used to take the pictures from the surface of the specimen, but it is not included in your curriculum. I am not going to that point also. Okay, microscope. Uh, please see, this is Zeiss, logo of Zeiss, and it is German made microscope, one of the best microscope being microscope manufacturer of the world. And their caption is here, we make it visible. For general knowledge purpose, the first picture of moon was taken with the Zeiss lens and the movie that is very famous, Lord of Rings, can be shooted with the help of Zeiss lens. And the Zeiss corporation before the division of Germany was a united corporation and after the partition of Germany into East and West Germany, Zeiss corporation was separated and after the breaking of Berlin Wall, that is in 90s, two German East and West Germany was united and Zeiss Corporation was also united. This is for general purpose. It will not be asked in your exam. Okay, this is the limit of resolution or resolving power. Please try to understand. Two points. P1 and P2, they are separated by a certain distance. You can see or resolve P1 and P2 as two separate points. But in the next diagram, they are more closer, but you can still differentiate them as two separate points. The third diagram, sorry, it is a mistake that is P1 and P2, they are much more closer but you can easily distinguish the two points as two separate points. In fourth diagram, P1 and P2, they are very much nearer. But you can see that they are two separate points. But in fifth diagram, P1 and P2 are overlapped. You can see that or you can, can say that P1 and P2 are the two separate points. Okay, that is the power of resolution. The distance at the top diagram, that is sufficient to say that these are two separate points. But in case of P1 and P2, in fourth diagram, the distance is very much small. Our naked eye is not be able to resolve these two distances. That may be in micron level. Our naked eye is not having the capability to separate the points as two separate points. In that point, we should use the aid to see the objects, two separate points as two separate points. That is microscope. Okay, this is the limit of resolution. Basically, in case of human naked eye, that is 0.1 millimeter. Okay, now the classification of microorganisms. Two kingdom classification because the origin of biology was occurred in Greek in case at the time of Aristotle, and there were two types of living organisms. Animalia and plant animalia are the animals and plant are the plants. 
and these classifications was based on that mode of nutrition and mode of locomotion. Animalia, they are heterotrophic nutrition. In Greek term, heteros means different and trophy means nutrition. That means animals are not able to make their own food and they are able to move. But in case of plenty, plenty is having the autotrophic nutri nutrition. Auto means self and trophy means nutrition. That is, they are capable to produce their own food. The microorganisms in that time was included either in Animalia or in Planty by studying the similarities with animals and plants in the two groups. To solve the problems as the knowledge of various microbial groups increased, it became apparent that some microorganisms are predominantly plant-like and some are animal-like and few other possess characteristic common to both plants and animals. To resolve these types of problems, German zoologist Ernest Haeckel in 1866 proposed a third kingdom that is protista to include all microorganisms excluding viruses. Bacteria were referred to as lower protista whereas other microbes, algae, fungi, protozoa were called higher protista. Okay, this is the three kingdom classification of Ernest Haeckel. Huh, this is the universal ancestor and then from universal ancestors to protista and protista is the microscopic organisms and animalia and planty and protista are mainly of two types, higher and lower protista. Now, with the increase of knowledge and with the development of various techniques, H. F. Copeland in 1930s proposed a separate kingdom, that is the fourth kingdom, Protoctista. H. F. Copeland proposed a fourth kingdom, Protoctista, or sorry, Protoctista and Monera, because he separated bacteria and blue-green algae into separate kingdom, Monera and placed other microbes into another kingdom that is Protoctista, possess algae, fungi and protozoa. And these are the four kingdoms, universal ancestor, animalia that is including animals, planty that is including plants, monera is including bacteria and cyanobacteria, Protoctista that is including algae, fungi, protozoa and micronematoda. Okay. With the increase of knowledge or advancement of technologies, in 1941, E. Pringsem reviewed the idea of Copeland and pointed out a close relationship between bacteria and blue-green algae. Because in that time, blue-green algae was included under the group of algae. But Pringsem reviewed the idea that between there is a quite similarity between the bacteria and blue-green algae. Okay, approximately in the same time, E. Saturn coined the term prokaryotic and eukaryotic to express organizational differences among the microorganisms and other organisms. Okay, and with the development of electron microscopy, electron microscopy was developed in 1931 by Noll and Ruska, okay, and it was, came to the market commercially in 1940s and during 1950s, extensive use of the microscopy, electron microscopy have started and by studying various types of microorganisms between prokaryotic, that is prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, and biochemical techniques, the scientists found various interesting information regarding the cell types and they found the differences in molecular organizations also. In 1962, R.Y. Stenier and C.V. Van Nail and Stenier is famous for his 
microbiology book. Okay, confirmed that both bacteria and blue green algae, then at that time they were renamed as cyanobacteria, have prokaryotic cellular organization. Okay, it is now well established that eukaryotic cells have a true nucleus segregated from the cytoplasm by an enclosing nuclear membrane having numerous fine perfor perforations in it whereas in prokaryotic cells the nuclear material that is dna is not enclosed within a nuclear membrane and instead it is distributed throughout the cytoplasm as discrete mass now the five kingdom classification of rh whitaker he was from cornell university united states of america and he proposed a five kingdom classification and this classification was popular up to 1980s due to its simplicity and rh whitaker proposed five kingdom the lower kingdom was the monera and that is prokaryotic microorganisms and eukaryotic microorganisms was included in protista and fungi he separated fungi as a kingdom and plantae it is including all the green plants excluding algae and animals all the animals including animalia and the popularity of Whitaker's classification was due to the simplicity of the criteria and these were based upon the cell types second one is the mode of nutrition third one is mode of reproduction okay and the characteristic features of monerans are mainly prokaryotic in nature they are having no they are having 80s sorry they are having 70s ribosomes they don't have well developed nucleus they are not having membrane bound organelles okay and other characters like prokaryotic organisms they are having in monerans in protista protista included eukaryotic microorganisms these are algae protozoa and micronematodes they are having the well developed nucleus they are having ats ribosome they are having membrane bound cell organelles like mitochondria etc okay and in case of plants they are mainly multicellular living organisms they are capable of autotrophic nutrition they are not able to move their reproduction is mainly bisexual mode some in some cases vegetative mode of reproduction is also seen okay in case of fungi fungi is totally devoid of what can i say chloroplasts they are not able to photosynthesis or they are not able to produce their own food fungi are heterotrophic in nutrition they are maybe they may be parasitic may be saprophytic or may be symbiotic in, as in case of lichen their cell wall is made up of chitin they are having ats ribosomes they are having mitochondria they are having nucleus their reproduction sexual type asexual type as well as vegetative types also in case of animals they are basically eukaryotic multicellular they are not having the cell wall cell membrane is the outermost layer they are having well developed nucleus having membrane bound cell organelles like mitochondria but they are heterotrophic in nutrition 
because animals are not having chloroplast they are not able to produce their own food so due to the simple criteria if we take our classified the living organisms into five kingdom and it, it was popular up to 1980s because the classification was done with the help of these criteria was too much quicker and it attracted the scientists to accept this classification but due to the increase of knowledge scientific knowledge due to the advancement of instrumentation development of modern techniques like dna sequencing other techniques like dna dna hybridization ribotyping etc fame that is fatty acid methyl ester it is a modern technique fatty acid methyl ester all these are not included in case of whitaker's classification but modern days science demands these inclusion of these techniques so it is become obsolete so many drawbacks are present here because in case of whitaker's classification there is no concept of archibacteria there is no place for viruses there is no inclusion of modern techniques like 16s rrna or 18s rrna homology study fame analysis biochemical studies ribotyping dna dna hybridization etc are not included so these are the drawbacks and for these reasons this has become obsolete because the modern days classification and modern modern days taxonomic approach is polyphasic in nature various types of informations are needed to classify to identify the living organisms for these reasons it is obsolete now though it is studied it is popular due to its simplicity now the three domain classification three domain classification was proposed by carl oos and george fox in 1977 from the university of illinois chicago united states of america and they used domain not kingdom and domain is much more higher in hierarchy in classification and they included all the living organisms into three domain domain eukarya included all the eukaryotic living organisms that include kingdom protista plantae fungi animalia etc domain archaea it is the new domain and domain bacteria domain bacteria included all the common bacteria that is chlamydia spirochetes gram positive bacteria endospore producers gram negative bacteria cyanobacteria all are in domain bacteria and they are basically known as u bacteria and domain archaea methane producers prokaryotes living in extreme salt prokaryotes that live in extreme heat etc these are included domain archaea the criteria of the classification of carlos and george fox was 16s rrna homology 16s or 18s in case of eukaryotes rrna homology okay modern day 
सेंस डिमांड्स दिस टाइप्स ऑफ स्टडी एंड दिस स्टडी स्टार्टेड द एरा ऑफ मॉलिक्यूलर फाइलोजेनी ओके एंड कर्ल उस हु डाइड इन 30 दिसंबर in 1912 who has rewritten the history of life in 1979 it was published and still it is popular because scientists are still using 16s and 18s rna homology to identify the living organisms in case of you prokaryotes it is 16s in case of eukaryotes it is 18s why 16s or 18s and now i have to tell you that what is s it is not millimeter or meter or kg whatever may be s s stands for zweigberg the scientists zweigberg's unit okay zweigberg's unit According to the name of the scientist, it is the unit of sedimentation coefficient. 1s is equal to 10 to the power minus 13 second. Please try to note, it is not found in your 11-12 books. 1s is equal to 10 to the power minus 13 second. In case of ribosomes, that is 70s. In case of prokaryote, is equal to 50s plus 30s. That means... 50 into 10 to the power minus 13 second, 13 into 10 to the power minus 13 second. Okay. And why 16s or why 18s? 60 RRNA. RRNA remains conserved during evolution. And the RRNA is resistant to horizontal gene transfer, resistant to mutation. And if there is any change in RRNA, the cell will be destroyed. No two RRNA sequences are similar between different organisms. If 16 or 18S RRNA is not similar, in case of two samples, th this is absolutely correct that they are two different organisms because RRNA remains conserved during evolution okay and why 16s why 18s karyotic karyotic Eukaryotic, it is 60s, 40s, 80s, it's 70s. Okay. In case of ribosomes, 60% is RRNA and 40% is ribosomal proteins. Okay. And in 60S, in case of eukaryotic, RRNA are of three types, 28S RRNA, 18S, sorry, 5.8S RRNA. 5s rna okay in case of 40s ribosomal subunit 18s rna okay in case of 50s ribosomal subunit 2 rna 23s 5s in case of 30s, it is 16s RRNA. So why 
16s or 18s various types of rnas there to code for a particular functional gene near about 800 to 1200 nucleotides are needed 800 to 1200 okay and for 18s rrna near about 5000 in nucleotide nt means nucleotides in case of 5 5.8s it is about 156 nucleotides in case of 5s it is 121 nucleotides okay and in case of 18s it is near about 1800 nucleotides and in case of 23s it is 2900 nucleotides in case of 5s sorry in case of 5s it is 121 and in case of 16s it is 1500 nucleotides so in case of 20s it is 5000 in case of 5.8s it is 156 rr nucleotides in case of 50s sorry 5s it is 121 nucleotides and in case of 18s rrna it is 1800 that satisfies the length of a particular gene that these are too much smaller and these are too much higher you can sequence 20s but it takes more time and it costs more but it will not give you much more information information which is given by 18s by coding this nu nucleotide it is sufficient to classify any organisms so 18s is studied in case of nucleotides 18s rrna used and for the same reason 16s rrna is used in case of prokaryotic cells that can be coded by near about 1500 nucleotides and these 1500 or 1800 nucleotides are sufficient to code for a gene 5000 is much more higher 2900 is higher 5s is much more smaller here 5.8s and 5s are also much more smaller to code for a particular gene okay for these reasons 18s rrna is used in case of eukaryote and 16s rrna is used in case of prokaryotes and these techniques are used to classify the living organisms in present day okay due to the universality of ribosomal rna and two different organisms are having different rrna sequences they will not be similar quite totally they will not be similar they will definitely differ and rrna is resistant to horizontal gene transfer rrna is resistant to mutation for these reasons rrna is used and to amplify rrna's universal primers are also available and scientists recognize this method for this reason three domain classification is much more popular still it is used okay and i have to just mention about the archaea or archaebacteria and domain bacteria that is u bacteria they are having some differences in case of archaebacteria archaebacteria and they are basically three types methanogens gens means genesis that is producing methane thermoacidophiles and third category is halophiles 
halogens salt filaments love the living organisms or halophiles are able to survive in high concentration of salt okay thermoacidophiles they are found in extreme environments like thermal vents or hot water springs in low ph that is lesser than point sorry lesser than 2 okay so these are the three basic types of archibacteria methanogens thermoacidophiles and halophiles and they are quite different from eubacteria eubacteria archibacteria okay in case of eubacteria the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan that is composed of n acetyl glucosamine that is nag and n acetyl muramic acid that is nam and in case of archibacteria it is made up of cell wall is made up of pseudo peptidoglycan nag and n acetyl telosaminuronic acid is present in case of archibacteria and nag and nam is joined in nag and nam is joined they are basically amino sugars joined by a glycosidic linkage that is beta 1 4 and here nag and nat in acetyl talosaminuronic acid nat joined by beta 1 3 glycosidic linkage 1 4 1 3 glycosidic linkage and this glycosidic linkage is lysozyme sensitive this glycosidic linkage is lysozyme insensitive they are initiation codon in case of eubacteria is formyl methionin okay and here it is methionin initiation codon is methionin Eubacteria is sensitive to antibiotics, various types of antibiotics. Archibacteria is insensitive to antibiotics. Okay. Another difference are also present. That is the fatty acid is mainly phyton diether and biphyton tetraether in case of archibacteria. And the fatty acid chains are linked with the glycerol by ether linkage in case of archibacteria and in case of eubacteria the fatty acid chain is linked with glycerol with ester linkage these are the basic differences between eubacteria and archibacteria students i have given you a brief idea about the microorganisms how many types of microorganisms how to classify and what are their the size their types all these things in a nutshell and it is an introductory lecture and if you are interested you can go through some reference books of microbiology by Prescott, Biology of Microorganisms by Brock, Microbiology by Pelzar, Microbiology by Stenier and co-authors, Microbiology by Tortora, Microbiology by Alchemo, all these books, these are good books. You can go through it, explore it. You are welcome to the mysterious and beautiful world of microbes. Okay, now I am ending here. Thank you very much for your patience sharing. And I am also giving you warm welcome in the Department of Microbiology, Barakpur Rashtri Guru Shurandhanath College, and as well as in the world of microbes. Thank you very much.